Hello everybody, I'm Tycho Selchu and welcome to a Company of Heroes 2 Shoutcast. This is a match from the uh, World Championships run by the Frontline Network and um, this is from I think round 4, maybe round 3 or round... F no, round 4 or round 5. So uh, these players are both quite good, they've fought through many people to get here and uh, in terms of being quite good you may recognize Sefa as our Ostair player. Sefa, a very good uh, Company of Heroes one player and he's back for company heroes two up against titty twister also a pretty good player uh playing as the soviets and titty twister is over from uh company heroes well both of them are from company heroes two dot org great fan site hang out there this is a best of three they're playing but by the time i post this the tournament's going to be over so you can go look at the bracket so i'm not going to bother casting it all in one uh giant video because there's no spoilers to unspoil but um these should prove to be pretty tremendous games because they're both very good players. And here's the Oster out with a machine gun first, even on this big Moscow outskirts map, while we have obviously conscripts first from the uh, Soviets. So uh, capping on this map is kind of weird because you it's like a big decision, right? Whether you go left or go right down here or over here or even up the middle because it's a huge map. So if you head right with these guys, like... You're not going to be able to change your mind and head left because it's going to take them forever just to get here, let alone over here. So you really need to decide where you're going to commit. Uh, Titty, Tw Titty Twister is committing very hard to the eastern side of the map. Sefa taking a much more moderate approach, just heading out sort of straight through the middle. Um, he is going to eventually want to cap this fuel, so probably with this cutoff and this, cu well, this strategic point and this strategic point, he's going to hook those up and then maybe send the Grens over or even send the machine gun over, uh, try and catch the opponent who's presumably eventually going to go for some sort of <clears throat> cutoff there because that's a fuel you want to, uh, not a cutoff, a decap. There's not a lot of cutoffs on this map, there's just decaps. And uh, decaps are plenty because it's so big that uh, chances are you'll just be able to wander around and um, see your opponent. So, um, Sefa and Twitty Twister not yet up. Now they see each other, so what, how's Twitty Twister going to react? Immediately Uraz back out. Sefa no longer has line of sight. He's in the fog of war. Titty Twister even going to hop in this building, so he'll be able to hold the strategic point against anything that comes out at him. There's a nice ladder on top of this building in case you've ever needed that. Um, seems like a really crummy place to store your ladder, right? How are you going to get it down? You need a ladder to get it to your ladder. But I'm not Russian, so I'm sure it's some sort of Russian tradition. Seth is like, fuck this. I'm not going to fight you. He's just walking past. Do you want to hang out in that building? You're going to hang out in that building all day. I'm going to set up my MG right on the road. Titty Twister's like, I can do this again. Run away! And Seth uh, somehow has sight on them for a while, but then he doesn't, and Titty Twister gets out and starts uh, decapping this munition. So uh, he'll probably also be able to blunt Seth's assault here with these conscripts once they see each other. Yep, now they're going to see each other. So um, aside from being pushed off here on the right when he wanted to get Cephas fuel, uh, Titty Twister is looking pretty good. Uh, he's got his own fuel and it's completely uncontested right now and he's got his conscripts in fighting. They'll probably lose the fight but they're going to need a nice focus fire in on the pioneers so that's going to force them off. Uh, that's, uh, they're not chasing either so I guess they were, oh, yeah they are chasing. And then Titty Twister caught them and told them not to chase. I don't know, it's tough. If you tell your unit to attack an enemy unit and then the enemy unit retreats while you're not paying attention, um, your guys will go off chasing them, and that can be really, really bad, especially if they hop out of cover. So, Titty Twister does the right thing. He sticks along as long as he can with his conscript squad until the second conscript squad comes up to reinforce him. Meanwhile, he's working on getting this cutoff, sees this MG, and hops behind this thing. So, taking advantage of True Sight, except, surprise, this guy's a dumbass. He's standing outside. Um, MG accidentally set up opposite of where Seth wanted it. Sefa wanted it to point, uh, but he instantly remedies that. He's going to be able to fire. Yes, sometimes you can't fire. Sometimes you can fire through hills. Well, you can, you can always fire through hills. It's um, other line of, it's line of sight obstructing things that you don't know whether or not you can fire sort of around, because it's very difficult to see sort of line of sight in this game. And also, um, hills uh, like I was saying, don't block line of sight. You would think with true sight, it would block line of sight, right? It's a hill, so obviously it'll block line of sight like anything else. But no, a hill does not block true sight. Because true sight is not actual true line of sight. It's true sight, all one word, with a little trademark symbol. That's what Relic calls it. And um, it doesn't work very well. So don't hide behind hills in this game. It's not going to work. Hide behind, like, objects. Um, of sufficient size, and uh, hope that your squad's not too big enough to point, pick up around, 
poke out around the other. Okay, so anyways, he forced, forced these two squads off, so this is going to look really bad for Sefa too. Twister's going to be able to get a hold of this fuel, which Sefa has yet to cap, so it's really weird uh, that Sefa is not prioritizing capping his fuel um, or anything. Maybe he's got some sort of strategy. We see he's only at 28 fuel. He did make it up to the Lictum Mechanized Company, so he can pop out a scout car if the opponent goes for any clown car stuff. Um, in terms of Titty Twister's teching, say that three times fast, uh, we don't have anything. He's just focusing on getting a hold on the map, maybe trying to be um, reactive to his opponent. Um, maybe just hasn't had time, really, to bring his uh, engineers back to build stuff. He's had them out capping the entire time, which is what you want to do, but eventually you're going to have to either sacrifice this engineer's capping power and just build something in your base for a while, or build a second engineer squad. And so uh, players seem to defer quite a bit on this. A lot of people get a second engineer squad. Um, a lot of people will end up uh, retreating them at some point to build, and that's exactly what Titty Twister is doing. The harder you focus on infantry um, rather than rushing a clown car, it seems um, the more likely you are to um, eventually sacrifice this one and build. Whereas if you're focusing on rushing a clown car, it's important to get that clown car out pretty fast. And also, um, you want somebody with flames in the clown car, so your engineers with flames in the clown car, so if they end up dying, because, you know, they're doing dangerous stuff, you're also going to want another engineer squad eventually, right? Because they need to build your next tier. Um, so you end up buying a second engineer squad anyways, then you can even do two clown cars, right? So if you're rushing the clown car, you also if the Russians are rushing the clown car. <laughs> How have I not made that pun yet? Oh my god, I've gone in Company of Heroes for like 30 plus shoutcasts, and I did not make a joke about rushing, rushing things. Anyways, I'm sure I probably did like eight times. Before I got um, if you're rushing a clown car, probably get two engineers. If you're not, uh, think about copying Titty Twister and not getting two engineers, just, um... In this pack. So he does build tier 1 eventually, um, so we might see the clown cars out. Here we have the clown of He's gonna have to do something versus this. Might actually lose this conscript squad on the retreat, the one with one man, obviously, not the one with like eight. Um, this could be really unfortunate. Yeah, he's dead, so that's that's down. If he loses this squad on the retreat, he's fucked too. Moscow Oscar is such a giant map that um, this sort of bullshit happens with a fair degree of regularity tiny micro mistake for Sefa that time, letting those people get away. Um, he's sort of stopped here for a moment, but uh, that's okay. He's got a whole other squad to roast, which Sefa's being slightly careful not trying to get AT grenaded. And so we have not just AT grenades, but Molotovs up by Titty Twister's Titty Twister. There's only one twisting going on, or one twister. In the equation. And I feel like we haven't seen any Molotovs thrown. So for the AT, by the way, if you were curious, he's getting Guard's Rifle, and he's probably going to stick them in the clown car. So this is a delayed clown car that we see. <coughs> I want to say we see it's popular with some people, but it might just be Titty Twister doing it over and over, and every time I see it, it's Titty Twister, but in any case, this is nice because you don't tip your hand early enough to let your opponent know that they need to get a scout car to counter your clown cars, but uh, you do get the um, clown car out in time to deal with it. exactly when the Flammenwerfer is going to be fucking you over, because then you can just pop your guards inside. Um, and there you go, but he doesn't have his clown car yet, he's just got his guards, he's upgrading the DP each DP light machine gun, M1981, 1891, 30. It doesn't say DP27 or DP30. This is going to be an eternal mystery for me. Oh man, this thing gets AT grenaded, so it might go down uh, to these guys with their AT rifle. Hit the dirt, also going in. Surprise, surprise. One more penetrating shot, and this thing is toast. And that would be ironic because it's a Flammenwerfer, which is sort of... Uh, I believe was originally designed to make toast more efficiently. The German thing all about efficiency, but it was repurposed as a war. Um, War Machine later on, but um, certainly after World War II, I know this was uh, re again turned back into a toast machine. And even today in Germany, uh, especially certain parts of uh, sort of thing so it's dead now, and uh, that's good for <laughs> that's good for Titty Twister because it's dead, and he also killed the Pioneer Squad. So things not looking quite so bad, having lost his Conscript Squad. Map control tilting more in Sefa's favor now. Uh, he's been doing a pretty good job capping with his Greater Squad, and uh, also his MG42 Squad, and that's also going to keep uh, infantry away once Titty Twister gets there. But um, on the other hand, he is seeding the entire left hand side back to Titty Twister, and. Um, it looks like Titty Twister is a bit ahead, uh, having taken out the Flammenberger half but with, with a less, um, less costly thing. He's got his guys with DP machine guns in here and the machine gun on the front, so that's really going to put the hurt on these Panzer Grands. Chances are they're not going to be able to rush in. Um, maybe they'll hit these conscripts who are going to soft retreat instead of hitting the dirt. Oh, I'm just hitting the dirt. I was about to say, yeah, you should probably hit the dirt. You're going to be a tempting target for the Panzer Grandiers to charge in on you but they're not going to do a lot of damage while they're charging in because you're going to hit the dirt and then that gives your cap card time to drive over and shoot everybody. So that's exactly what Titty Twister is doing. 
Um, this even has a fairly good amount of anti-infantry power when it's uh, standing still and the light machine guns can fire out. They can, of course, fire out even when it's not standing still, I'm pretty sure, which is massive bullshit, but um, they take a reduced accuracy penalty and then then given the low accuracy of machine guns in the first place, that's not tremendous. Nice hit the dirt here, um, firing on Cephas MG42. If you can hit the dirt before you get suppressed, you will never get suppressed. Uh oh, here comes the scout car, so typically this thing's gonna win. Um, two good bursts will take this down to like 5% health, and then the third burst will kill it. Um, but you see really good AT rifle hits on this thing, so it's not a foregone conclusion. Titty Twister does the perfect thing, hops out of the clown car and sends his guard's rifle forward to deal with this. Um, but also, Sefa does the perfect thing, pulls the scout car back, so excellent micro by both players, excellent decision making from both players, uh, they know what they're doing, and Sefa doubling down on this uh, half track, let's swap over, it doesn't have the munitions for the farm of effort upgrade yet, might just want to use it to transport people and reinforce in the field, but let's not kid ourselves, it's going to be a farm of effort half track, Titty Twister floating some fair amount of fuel, because uh, he's popped out a sniper, which is just manpower having no fuel, of course, for the sniper, 3, just, just C, just 360, not 3, just C, 360, um, my, I'm very tongue-tied because to be twisted. Okay, um, here comes Sefa. He's gonna catch the scout car. It's gonna be destroyed. I'm thinking, yeah, look at that. One volley down to nothing. The second volley. Good night, sweet prince. Overdrive. Oh man, that was badass. He was like, I will get you out of here, comrades. Just hold on. Buckle your seatbelt skis. Then he exploded. Well, first he abandoned. Then he exploded. Abandoned is really not the right word for those vehicles because everybody inside dies. It's not like, you don't, you don't call it an abandoned house if you show up and like a serial killer has killed everybody. No, it's a house full of dead people. So they're not abandoned vehicles, it's a vehicle full of dead people. You can abandon vehicles in that war. You can tell the crew to get out and then they're like, where should we go? And you're like, well, I've got a lot of important things for you to do, right? You can go over to the left, you can go over to the right, pick up some guns, you can lay some mines on But no, there's no abandonment in Company Heroes 2. People go down with the ship. It should just, they should just be called ghost vehicles because there's just dead people inside. Relic, please change abandoned critical to ghost vehicle critical. Secured. Signed, Taiko Salchu, June uh, something, 2013. Please do that. That's probably the biggest issue with coming here. Um, no ghost. No ghosts, no buy for me. I already own the game, but if I could purchase it again, I wouldn't. Oh, these guys pack up because they see these guys coming. Even with the PPSHs, uh, they decide to get it out of there. And the thing is, if you stay hit the dirt and the Panzer Grenadiers run up to you and start destroying you, you're going to get some really good damage in on them as they run up to you. But then when you start the retreat, the moment you stand up and you lose the hit the dirt bonus, um, that then they're going to start doing some super damage to you. And sometimes, or fairly often even, um, I'm actually going to say sometimes, sometimes when you hit retreat, first your guys are going to be like, stand up from hit the dirt, and then they're gonna be like, hmm, let's all, like, arrange ourselves, because we need to be in some mystical configuration. So they spend, like, three seconds, like, getting into some weird, like, symbol, like, probably trying to form a hammer and sickle or something from the air, but they never make it, they eventually just start retreating, but it takes them some time, and that's the sweet, sweet time for the Panzer Grenadiers to destroy you. Titty Twister spending his, uh, floated fuel on Tier 4 and instantly with the SU-85, so, uh, the tier 4 looking like what most Soviets are, um, well, I shouldn't say most Soviets, tier 4 looking like what Soviets who win games end up going for. Um, tier 3 still has the pretty sweet T-70, and uh, if you want to rush the T-70 out, that's, uh, that's something that I can definitely condone, a lot of good players are doing that, but you do eventually need to get to tier 4, uh, Soviets having massive trouble uh, with the recent T-34 change up to 95 fuel, they're having quite a bit of trouble taking on the um, Osthair, specifically the Panzer IV, which just completely outclasses the uh, T-34 in every way, and unless you can get a critical mass of T-34s, which is just more difficult now that the cost has been raised, uh, you probably want to go up to Tier four for the SU-85 to counter the Osthair uh, stuff. So, in terms of the Osthair stuff, he doesn't have any stuff, he hasn't even teched up yet. Uh, he's only just now researching Tier two, so he'll be able to build Tier two, and then uh, the Panzer IV and the Osthair needs to do. Um, and you're like, oh, Taika, is he going to go up to tier 3 for whatever you get out of there? And the answer is no. No Germans do that. No German will ever do that. And even after that, we don't know. But there's nothing, nothing. I'm slightly exaggerated, but not a ton. So that was a pretty, uh, pretty damaging fight for the Soviets losing a lot of infantry there, but they did force off this Panzer squad, and they almost got themselves a scout car for their troubles, but excellent use of smoke from Sefa. 
um, his Panzer Tactician thing that comes from this passive ability that's in his commander tree uh, lets you really get these things out of there. And if you watch Sefa fight against the Relic developers in the 2v2 casted by Sunday Night Fights, you see the Relic developers did pretty good against Sefa and Tommy by just popping smoke literally every time their vehicles were about to die. And so that's um, pretty much a get out of jail free card button. It'll block line of sight completely in... Is it still there? Sort of. So like the smoke is like this big, it'll block line of sight completely behind it, and even when you're in it, you can't see out of it. So you have this clump of smoke that they have to move through to see you. So assuming they don't have someone around the side spotting for you, nice movement here with the guards getting a grenade off. Assuming they don't have someone there on the side, um, you're pretty much going to be able to reverse out of that fight. Um, Titty Twister saving his SU-85, maybe he doesn't want to send it in and alert his opponent um, that it's there. Joke's on him because Seth is just now getting the support armor core. Um, actually timed that extremely well, perfectly well. Builds the Panzer IV with zero fuel floating. I have to imagine, well, I don't know. It's it's kind of early in the game for, I mean, early in the life cycle of the game for Sefa to like have down completely how long it takes to build a support army core and how much fuel income it takes uh, to have your thing ready. So yeah, Sefa just got lucky, I think, right there. But um, obviously there was some intuition going on there too. He was pretty close even if he weren't, even, even if he hadn't been perfect. So excellent fight there uh, with Hit the Dirt. Plus these guys who get suppressed but can still fire because the MG42 does not do the ultra pinning. Uh, it just sort of splits its fire between the two. Um, excellent job there. And then Smoke tries to save the half but then it comes back for more. And the SU-85 comes from behind destroyed. Um, did he kill the... He killed the engineer, so that was um, almost worth it. I don't know. Like the Flamer engineer trading for a non flammenwerfer for a half-track is not a horrific trade. You lose the fuel on the half-track, but... Um, you take a Flamer Engineer Squad out, the Flamer Engineer Squad can cap, and it's got a Flamer, which is really important in an infantry fight. So I think Sefa probably said to himself, you know what, I'm probably going to lose this half-track, but I'd like to stop him from taking the machine gun or get that Flamer Engineer who's trying to recruit it or something. And you know what, he made the decision, and uh, I think it worked for him. So here's a big contingent of infantry moving out. They've got LMG-42s on the Grenadiers, and we're going to have to see how they hold up against this sniper who I've not even mentioned, but it's existing. Now there's two of them. Uh, Titty Twister going for the... Um, Siberian sort of metagame sort of thing. Siberian very big on the snipers even later in the game. And Titty Twister uh, seems to be big too. We have 12 kills. Uh, I probably should have mentioned this dude earlier because he's been in these infantry fights on the left for quite a while. 12 kills, 13 on that sniper and then one kill. Okay, so these guys are slacking. These ladies are slacking. And, um, but still that's just immensely annoying. That's what forced off those Panzer Grandiers long ago that I totally mentioned. And, um, these guys are what a sniper's doing? They're, they're shooting the scout car. That's really funny. Here comes the smoke. It's not gonna work. It might actually work. to see it, but it, for a moment we we turned on the fog of war in Sefa. Like you can see, being inside that cloud, like you can't see out of it. Um, so those guards' rifle were getting themselves pinned either because Titty Twister wasn't paying attention or because he wanted to get his snipers into position to take out. The MG that was suppressing him, so uh, that's a good way to bait an MG into staying still long enough for your two snipers to fire, taking out two men, leaving the MG with only one guy, which is easy to pick off on the retreat, so he was trying that. So now we have the Panzer IV, it's too little too late potentially because there's this SU-85 out, and the second SU-85 being built, Seth is still doing pretty good in terms of map control. Um, these guys trying to ura to catch this thing, then the SU-85 will be able to transfer over here and take it on. SU-85s pretty much own Panzer IVs, unless the Panzer IV is well micro. And as you see that, AP grenade, near, poof, you should join the major leagues. Um, but, uh, yeah, so unless you get us a good circle strafe on the SU-85, it's going to destroy your uh, Panzer IV, and um, it's going to destroy your Stug, and in fact your Stug can't even circle strafe, and it's going to destroy your Austin. Uh, your Austin can circle strength, but it's going to have total penetrating. So, uh, with two kills and 16 kills on these snipers, Sefa says, you know what, two can play at that game, uh, but of course by that he means there's two people in the Soviet sniper squads, and so he's like, the only way to stop two from playing at that game is to bring in one who plays it better. But this guy's going to be fucked, right, because there's four Soviet snipers versus him. Um, so. Or I, sus I suppose technically two Soviet snipers and two Soviet spotters, but the spotters are so well trained in snipership that, um, see that's a PTRS. 
but um, they drop it. Let's look at these guys. The spotters are so well trained in sniper ship that they can just pick up the gun and go to town. That's a PTRS. That's PTRS. So bizarrely, um, well, I don't. Know. It's not super bizarre. If you're you lose a guy who's carrying a PTRS and he's like probably what this squad got down to low people. So you lose the guy. He drops his PTRS on the ground. Technically, like it looks like it, but the squad actually keeps his PTRS. So that's. Fun. So here we come, it's the sniper time, sniper, sniper, sniper time, German sniper already has one kill on the guards, uh, now he has two kills, uh, Seth is being very, very brazen with the sniper, he knows there's Soviet snipers out there, uh, Soviet snipers are moving in, they're not quite in range, and, uh, excellent use of these MG, LMG42 people holding up quite well against these guards, guards come in, throw the grenade, these people reposition, that's annoying because they can't fire their LMG42, but then they back back up the front, he is firing, these guys meanwhile are firing, but they're not doing that shit because they hit the dirt. Uh, this fight is just going badly, badly for the guards because you can't stand up to LMG42 fire. Now we finally have the snipers going on, and this is just hilarious. Fucking Titty Twister chasing the sniper to hell and back. How does he know where it is? He doesn't. He's just guessing. Now it's close. Now he's fucked. Can you see it? Nope. But it's about to shoot, so then he's gonna, it's gonna start the chase all over again. Uh, meanwhile, excellent flank, excellent flank by Seven coming in with these panzer radios from off the side. Uh, almost kills that sniper, but he oorahs away. It's not actually a oorah sprint, um, but it's basically the same thing. Right there. Um, wonderful, also useless MD42. It's interesting that he's not shooting at this one. Trying to crush these people with the SU85. Is he gonna crush everybody? Oh my god, oh my god, they're suppressed. Oh shit. Okay, they retreat. And also this turning radio is really quite good enough. I guess he's driving away now. Um, oh, look at this, micro fail. They're dead. So uh, he probably thought he had hit the dirt or even forgot those were over there, but in any case, they got destroyed. If you hit the dirt before the MG42 opens up on you, you can win that fight. I think I was trying to say that like 20 minutes ago, but I got caught up in the thing I do where I say like eight things at once, and I don't forget what I don't circle back. So um, if you hit the dirt, uh, well, pretty much at any range is an MG42, you can pretty much win, um, except really close in. If you're like this close, basically, um, it's it's hard to indicate. Okay, like this close, if you hit the dirt in here, it's just going to shoot you and you're going to die. Um, although if you get lucky hits with your PPSH, you can decrew it, and or you can kill the guy and charge the gun, and then this guy comes over and he's like, I will recruit, or no, he's like, I, I can't, for some reason I can't do German accents on, like, all the time. I can only do them. So anyways, he'll come over, and <clears throat> he'll start to sit down and sort of get into the position, do the little squat thing. Um, but while he's doing that, you'll be shooting him. So if you get a lucky hit on the guy manning the gun, he dies, then the next guy comes up, and he dies, and then... So that can work. But normally, if you're, like, this close to an MG42, while you're hit the dirt, it's just going to kill you. Um, and certainly don't try that without PPSHs. But um, aside from that, at pretty much any range, if you hit the dirt before it suppresses you, your conscripts are probably going to outshoot it. Uh, this might change depending on veterancy, so vet 2 does not do anything. But well, with the armor maybe, and then vet 3 increases weapon accuracy, so potentially vet 2 or vet 3, MG42 is will win the fight. Maybe if you're conscript for vet 2 or vet 3, that negates it. But um, the idea is, did he just lose a squad? Seems like it. That's uh, that's really good. That's really good. And Oh, the sniper's too there we go. And these guys have to retreat now, so excellent, excellent, excellent sniper micro from Titty Twister, we have to say. Um, these guys have 6 kills, these guys have 21 kills. Um, actually need to introduce a caveat right there. In a lot of ways, it's excellent sniper micro, but uh, it's incredibly sexist, right? He's giving all the kills to the dudes, so I really can't condone that. Um, yeah, this needs to be an equal opportunity. Sniper... Uh, usage to the twister so please I'd like to see that improve in the future but um, despite having what seems like a commanding hold on the game Sefa or titty twister is not destroying Sefa yet Sefa's managed to get up to two Panzer fours mostly by refusing to engage with them because um, he knows these SU 85s are out there and Sefa's like you know what if I fight these things I'm gonna be fucked I'm just gonna have to figure something out and what he's figured out is just like eh, I'm gonna cap the whole map and titty twister is not able to do much um, against that, despite having a copious amount of infantry and his MG42, which hasn't budged yet, I would think about repositioning that thing. Um, so probably both players, or Titty Twister especially, focused on making his snipers work. He had to retreat these guys. Um, extremely unclear what he's retreating from. Maybe he just wants them to get over to the right. But um, Titty Twister, that's definitely a lot of micro that you have to take care of when you've got the two snipers going simultaneously with everything else. So, uh, possibly losing a sight of the larger picture. Um, in a commanding lead, but somehow losing the map and paying for it. So 
Uh, maybe spend less time from my growing your snipers and more time just hot king your now. These guys really get destroyed by the guys in the forest if they don't make it out. It's super unfortunate for a titty twister. They're vet 2 also, and this is at about the point in the game, the 25 minute mark. You don't want to be losing your vetted squads. This has been a tremendous game so far, I have to say, and we're uh, only at 300 VPs for both players, so this is going to keep on going nice. Like I said, hit the dirt at basically any range. You're going to take out the MG42. Seth is fucked, has to get out. Sniper takes a shot. Was that the dude? I think it was the fucking dude, guys. I think the dudes are getting all the kills. Um, we need some Title Seven up in the shit. So we've got. What was I gonna? Oh right. So Seth had just. There's nothing his lone MG42 can do against these conscripts. Even without the sniper support, it's just Titty Twister is a good enough player to get those hit the dirts in. And the hit the dirt is just basically a hard counter to everything ever. So as we reach what's probably about the mid-ish point of the game. I'd like to do a plug for my sponsor. I don't have a sponsor, so I can't do anything about that. But if you want to give me money, I'll, I'll whore you out so bad. Like, I will not go five seconds without saying whatever shit you want me to sell. Mountain Dew? I'll sell Mountain Dew. I haven't even had a Mountain Dew since I was like 12. I'll sell that shit. These guards, I don't know what their plan is. Um, I guess they do have their DP machine as a fuck, but it feels like You don't have your snipers over here anymore, buddy. Your snipers are up here, they're all crawling around. I love how they move as a team. It's so cute. The two guys are probably married to the two women. Or maybe they're both couples, like the guys are gay and the women are gay. So that's that's maybe what's going on. In any case, they're all moving around in a nice little clump waiting to get destroyed together. But um, he pays for that by not being able to split them up and get some stuff done. I guess he must have thrown a grenade to take out those two Panzer Gradiers. And then uh, boom, does it again. And wow, talk about your guard's micro rifle. Your guard's rifle micro. It's, it's very hot where I live. It's San Diego. It's like 80-something degrees and worse inside because I don't turn the AC on because I'm a cheap ass. Um, let me, I'll, I'll paint you a picture. I'm not wearing a shirt. That's how hot it is. Um, normally, I don't wear a shirt to sh show off my sexy body, but right now, I don't wear a shirt because it's hot. So, wonderful guards mar rifle micro. I just really honestly have no idea how they killed those two Panzer Grens. I feel like Sefer was maybe a little early on the retreat with these guys. They were at four dudes. He didn't want to pay the manpower, I suppose, to reinforce them, but he's not starving. Both these players floating a shit ton. None of them want to commit to any fancy units. Normally, I get really mad when people are floating you infant if floating shit, floating resources. That's the word. It's called resources. Hey, look, they split up. So now, confirm, these two are a couple and these two are a couple. So, um... Normally I get mad when people are floating resources, but in this case it's a mind game going on. Neither wants to commit lots of money to something before seeing what the opponent commits the money to. So I think Sefa just bought something. Why did I switch away? Nope. Nope. There's a hallucination. Heat induced hallucination. Brain is boiling. These pants are fours are buddies. Yeah, look, you you two have been friends the entire game. Someday you're gonna run into an SU85 and things are gonna go interesting because two Panzer IVs versus an SU-85, uh, that's really a toss-up, right? What you want to happen as the Russians is you get enough damage in on one of the Panzer IVs that it has to retreat, uh, or else it'll die if you just attack it with your SU-85, and then it's down to one versus one, and you can totally do that um, and so you get, um, once you get circle strafe. So the goal is to get enough damage in on one Panzer IV before the second Panzer IV just goes to circle strafe city. And these little uh, craters here from the tanks firing are really nice because it lets the snipers cloak. They need to be in some kind of coverage cloak and negative counter, or negative cover no, it's not count. Um, get out of there! Get to the chopper! Uh oh, you lost your end. <laughs> they drop one over here and they so they go and pick it up, but they drop another one over here. It's like, god damn it! Ivan, just as we picked up Sergei's rifle, you had to drop okay, yours. Fuck, what, what were we just doing? Here we go, so back checking. So this is something we are probably going to expect to see more often in uh, Company Heroes 2, just because there's so few teching options. Um, it's like, what are you going to do with your fuel, right? You either just tech up to something and start building that, or you back tech. And so um, potentially we're going to see a back tech for T-70s to run around and uh, do the thing that T-70s do best, which is going to asshole mode, or he's going to dump some stuff into fuel T-34s and um, use their ram just as an I win button. Because as his opponent pumps out these uh, Panzer IVs, we're only at two for Cephas so far, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a third at some point. Floating 250 fuel, motherfucker, he's going for it. Oh, just as I say it. It's the tiger. He's the thing with the dude. And um, so just, um, and so yeah, uh, 
T-34 is pretty much a hard counter to tigers. And look, that's what he's building, a T-34. A T-34 is a hard counter to every um, opponent tank, not because it's good at killing them, but because it's got a hilarious ability called ram. You just click on ram, you click on your opponent's tank, you go grab a drink or something, you come back, and uh, your SU-85s have finished them off. So uh, it's it's like the, like hit the dirt. Ram is an easy mode um, thing that is extremely powerful for the Soviets. This sniper is just how have you how have you gotten 11 kills? While the well, the answer how you gotten 11 kills while the two Soviet snipers are around is because you've been very cautious, right? You've only gotten 11 kills. Not more for the taking. Oh man, these guys are running, 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 running. Seth is up to vet three grenadiers. Does not want to lose them to the sniper squad. Oh, sniper's under fire from the tiger. Now they're retreating. This might have been a bad retreat. Might have been a problem. That's first, but this, uh... Oof, loses one of the snipers. Uh, T-35 mine can kill them right here, so that'll be good if he can lure the tiger over. Here we go, climactic battle coming in. Meanwhile, we have a T-34 going down here, trying to crush some people. Either, yes, oh, oh, man, ah, uh, yes. He just orgasm twice, because he crushed two fighters. Um, but, so, tiger's gonna have to pull out, because SU-85 is shooting in the front, and of course, in front with Bane of every possible he does use the ram, but it's in the incorrect tactical situation. Look at the sad little gun on his camera before. I just love the ram, the ram gun on the Oscar tanks. Oh, we have a strafe for something coming in. Bombing run coming in. Crew shocked. They are just so shocked that somebody would try and bomb the heck out of them that um, they're going to be stunned for a little while. So many weird criticals in this game. Um, and nobody knows what they do. No, I know what they do. Everyone knows what they do. It's just no one... Uh, so yeah, bomb a thing, shock the crew, whatever. This T-34 is dead. Panzer IV, one of them's limping away. <laughs> yeah, you are going to have to be repaired, aren't you? Your gun is broken, your engine is damaged, so you're going to have to get some pioneers over there someday. So that's going to be annoying as hell for Sefa. Plus he has to repair up his Panther, or his Tiger, which took massive damage. Massive damage from the SU-85s. Look at this, it's hurt. It's also sort of pretty, I don't know. It's a nice skin. What does this mean? WH-34678. Message. Relic put hidden messages in Company Heroes 1 and messed up on the text, so probably they're going to be Company Heroes 2. WH. William Harrison. William Harrison. I don't know. It's a mystery. Um, these guys are running away. So they picked up the AT rifle, I suppose, from over on this fight. Um, can't help but think maybe not the greatest idea? You're going to sacrifice huge amounts of infantry killing power, like a quarter of your squad. A uh, quarter of your firepower can disappear, and in exchange, you get a gun that's uh, going to put some mild damage if it manages to penetrate these things, which is not going to... Again, Titty Twister saving up the resources, banking a shit ton, waiting to see what Sefa does. I feel like you've seen Sefa commit, right? So maybe get a third SU-85. He's possibly saving for the fuel. Um, nope, he's not. So, I don't know. Buy either... I would, at this point, as Titty Twister, grab an SU-85 or a uh, T-34. Potentially doesn't want to trigger the upkeep. He's already at 25 damn power income from the original thing. So uh, he doesn't want to make that worse. Gunner killed. Annoying. Nice, nice smoke pop. Oh, by the way, we also saw smoke popping down here. It didn't really do anything, but it's nice to see stuff he's using it. Hey, look, he is repairing. Great to see that going. So this map just back and forth, flip-flopping. 33 minutes, both players at around 300 VP. Still, it's just been back and forth. Very evenly matched. Wonderful match. This Tiger's still being repaired. This is the first out of a best out of three. My god. How epic will it get? Excellent unit preservation, by the way. Let's look at the... We have two veterancy on these guys with only 10 kills, right? It's just how much they've been attacked this entire time. I guess they got a vehicle kill, too. We have two veterancy on these guys, only eight kills. Uh, we have triple vet on these guys with only nine kills. So this is all basically coming... Two friendly skills. Wow, what assholes. So this is all basically coming from getting their ship pushed in. If these guys die, that's going to be really bad. AT grenade. No, just kidding. Um, so that's pretty much all coming from getting their ship pushed in. This doesn't quite work because they don't have to do it. So they're just going to sit here for a while. Get shot. Uh, he might just be happy I'll let that happen. Uh, tie up the MG42. But uh, I don't know. Now he's losing guards rifles, so they should get out of here. And actually, you do get veterancy. Oof, now they're about to, right? You do get veterancy now, just for letting people shoot you. Because you don't, no one has to get a kill to get vet. Oh, by the way, he bought a third SU-85, so he does my advice. So, um, uh-oh, sniper. Where's the other sniper? Where's the other sniper? Oh. There it is. Um, 
So yeah, now you'll get veterancy just by letting people shoot at you, and also you'll get the veterancy by shooting at people. So these guys very badly missed my crew, four people dead, so that's not at all good. Conscript is like, sure, whatever, I'll lose four of them. Not a big deal. But guard's rifle, uh, to reinforce them, is quite expensive. Oh look, hey, it's a T-34, a hero said, hey, he didn't build a T-34. Five, he built a T-34. Still, that's the other thing I recommended he build, so I'm Tycho Snow. Um, what would be really nice if, he's, if he could vet up one of these T-34s to vet one, then they could be able to cap points, and that would just be beautiful for him. He'd send it over here, cap some points, when Panzer IVs show up, he rams one of them, brings in the SU-85s, which he'd have to keep fairly close. But um, Seth has just been doing a really interesting thing by really being super cautious with these Panzer IVs the entire game. These have four kills, this thing has 20 kills, but it's been alive for like 10 years, and just been horrendously cautious, has never tried to push in on his opponent. Um, T Twister also being cautious with the SU-85s, that's slightly more understandable because you don't want to push too far into enemy territory. That opens you up to flanks, and these things are very bad when they're flanked because notice they can only fire forward. This guy, um, this guy's looking for stuff. You ever gonna put those down, buddy? Nope, I guess you're just gonna do that forever. Okay. Um, I suppose that's because he turned on focused sight. Does this thing have focus sight turned on? Yes, it does. So we cannot tell the difference. Uh, these guys either need to hit the dirt or run away. Now it's going to be really tough for him to make any headway over here with two Panzer IVs. Um, looks like, again, he's sending the T-34, so we're going to have to see. Is he sending? No, he's not sending the T-34. Okay. You know what I like? Trees. Trees are pretty good. Check that out. We have a fight. I should do that. And then they hit the dirt. Yes, excellent. Beautiful. So now they're vet three. They can just, like, they're badasses. Doing huge damage to these guys. I don't know what that grenade was for. We didn't hit anything. Then he pulls out. And that was completely and utterly unnecessary. You have two snipers down here. And a guard squad coming. These guys were hit the dirt. And these guys have an AT rifle. So very bizarre retreat right there for Titty Twister. Possibly um, a late response to the grenade. But it doesn't matter because the grenade didn't kill anybody. And now we have a Katyusha rocket launcher being built from Titty Twister. And if we switch over to Seppo, we see he's just floating along. Um, his manpower income is horrific. The tiger cutting into his upkeep. Badly. He's at 74 people, so now he's got one. Well, just kidding. He just lost an MG. Down to 68. Upkeep goes up to 197. But uh, that was not good for him. How's the sniper? Oh, shit! Oh, Marcus, or Titty. Why did I say Marcus? Titty Twister didn't see the sniper just in time, but fairly good reaction. Now he's chasing. Is he going to go all the way? Well, he is. Yep, he's, he's fine. He's cool. It's all good. Don't worry. We got the cutoff here, but um, it's only cutting off a. This is a weird cutoff, by the way. Um, it, technically, it'll cut off the fuel, I guess, but like, when do you... That's that's your opponent's fuel. It mostly just cuts off this strategic point. It's a strategic point to cut off another strategic point. That's how maps are designed these days. Your company has too lame. Um, so again, conservative use of the Panzer IVs, but it's been getting more and more brazen. This map is just now split basically down the middle. Um, look at these guys. Vet 3, I love the interpretation of the Soviet player. Probably gonna immediately fuck that up by losing the squad. Check it out. On the way through. They're hard asses though. Vet 2 makes them tough to kill. So this game split right down the middle in terms of player skill. We split right down the middle in terms of VPs, and now we're split right down the middle in terms of map control, except this one holdout shaped like Nevada. Um, in the corner of the map. And conservative use of Panzer IV is paying off for Sefa in spades. It's getting him this entire side of the map, and that's really, really important. That's what's keeping him in the game. Tinted Twister does not really know how to handle it, has not had the cojones to commit his SU-85s to the right. Maybe could have done it before the Tiger's out, but now that the Tiger's out, it seems like he lives in constant fear of that thing. He doesn't want it to break through and just, like, massacre his lines, so he's content to sort of hang out in the middle with his SU-85s, providing a uh, anti-Tiger bulwark, and um, also an anti- the four bowl work if they ever show up. They aren't showing up, so, uh, yeah, this game is just tremendous. Uh, snipers, how are the snipers doing? They haven't killed the opponent sniper yet. Do we have equal representation yet? Vet 3 and Vet 2, 34 and 14 kills between them, 48. That's amazing. We don't have equal representation yet. Titty Twister confirmed misogynist, but that's all right. We'll give him a pass because this is a video game, so misogyny is pretty much expected. Is he going to catch the sniper someday? No, he's 14 kills and vet one on the sniper. What do we have coming in? Oh, another tiger tank! Two tigers! 
This is bonkers. This is probably the craziest game that hasn't been like balls to the wall action packed. Like the, both players are just feeling each other out, not committing to stupid fights. The way you typically win a real time strategy game is that your opponent does something stupid, and that's never more true than in Company Heroes 2, right? You just wait for them to pull some boneheaded move with the units they need to win, get them killed. Whoa. You're, you are so dead. This crater just saved your life. It's cloaked in there. So these guys didn't shoot you. But you wait for your opponent. These guys might go down. That could be really bad. Get to counter snipe, but LOL doesn't matter. It's Soviet. Uh, might get a second counter snipe, though. This would be really bad at this. Like, that's so oh, just getting a shoot. What are you doing? This weird shit. Um, you're basically waiting for your opponent to do something stupid and capitalizing it. 90%, well, 90% is a little high, is a large percentage of these protons, but no! Oh, okay, they're taken from the Oh, look at that! That's a sweet-ass smoke. Run away! Now, whoop, he's committing, and exactly the thing that he didn't want to happen is happening. The tiger's coming, and he rams one of them, so your T-34, like I said, is badass. But, um, it looks like he's probably gonna be able to finish off the Panzer fours. I don't see these getting out of there. One down. Second one gonna be down. What's gonna happen? Uh, stuff I'm wasting. Maybe I'm fishing out this T-34. should probably have been rushing this Panther over to save it. We have a strafing run coming in to try and do god knows what. Um, certainly it's not gonna save the Panther IV. We had, um, fragmentation bombs dropped by, um, at one point, but I don't know where those went. Probably down here. It's very confusing. I would have guessed over here, but it looks like not. So both these Panzer IVs are dead. The tiger's coming over. It's too late. Um, Tinny Twister, I think, is even going to be able to see it. Um, yes, because the plane gives you sight. It's stupid. Why does the straight run give you sight? That's ridiculous. It even reveals, reveals the sniper. Strafing run should just be shooting people, not seeing people, whatever. So now we're licking our wounds. Um, Titty Twister finally committed. He punched through, destroyed those Panzer IVs. Decisive strike. Very good job. Lost his T-34, but I think losing the T-34 was the correct choice. Look at this. Katusha into the fog of war to try and catch the tiger. Very interesting, especially because it's not going to do any damage if it hits. It really and, um, poof. Very lucky none of these pioneers died. Um, so, sacrificing the T-34, easily the right choice. It probably couldn't have even gotten away from the tigers had it tried to run, especially showing your backside. Two tigers firing at you, you're like, you're fucked, because the T-34 has got no armor. Um, by the way, look at T Titty Twister's manpower into 164 because he's at 90 people. Um, so, probably could not have gotten his T-34 out of there. Nice hit in from T-S-85. So, did the right move, sacrificed the T-34 to ram one of the tigers. This meant that, number one, the tigers had, um, well, the remaining tiger with the gun had a target to fire at, which was this disabled T-34. Um, so he couldn't go over to the right. And number two, one of the Tigers was out of the fight. So really, I think if we, with the benefit of 20-20 hindsight, what Sefa should have done was been like, fuck this thing, I don't care. You, you've destroyed your engine, you cannot move, you're mobilized, and your gun is down. So I'm gonna drive my Tiger over here and try and save these guys. Maybe pop smoke on both these Panzer fours and just pull a full retreat. Tiger comes in from the side, and at that point the SU-85s are fucked. Katusha destroys the sniper. He is dead. He is no more. And that gives the Katusha zero damage. It's a first kill. Um, but we still have both sniper squads alive. What, still Vet 3 for the dudes, Vet 2 for the ladies. Vet 3 on these conscripts, Vet 3 on these conscripts, Vet 3 on these guards rifles, Vet 1 on these engineers. Um, so Titty Twister just playing a bang up game. And um, I think Seth is going to really pay for the loss of those Panzer IVs. Um, he still has two Tigers, so don't count them out yet. How's the uh, Tiger over here going? Uh, this thing got bought really quickly. I think it just ran over everybody. Look at that smoke. Look at that smoke. Um, so not even Vet 3 Guards Rifle can stand up to a tiger. Obviously not. Uh, but I think we're going to have to call this one for Titty Twister unless the tigers do something crazy. Sefa's not out of the game yet. Um, he's only up against two SU-85s, right? Titty Twister does have to rebuild his T-34, which he's doing right now. Where is it? There it is. Hello, nurse. Um, but yeah, Sefa, unless he can really make it work with these tigers, it's not going to happen. Um, he's just low on squads. Bled, bled manpower and bled squads by these snipers. Excellent usage. I think floated too much stuff. Maybe he's going to go for another tiger. I don't know. He's saving all his money. Panzer IV would probably be better at this point because honestly, T-34s are just a nope button for the enemy tanks, right? You don't, you see an enemy tank that you'd rather not fight? You're like, hmm, that's a tiger. 
it's going to be difficult for me to engage, especially because you have a second tiger. Oh, that's okay. I have a T-34. I'm just going to ram you. You don't have a tiger anymore. What would you say? You have a tiger? No, you have a sad little tiger with a droopy snout in the front because I rammed it. And yeah, I gave up my T-34, but you know what my T-34 cost me? 240 manpower, 95 fuel. I don't even notice that. Like, I spend that stuff in my sleep sometimes. I wake up and I check my credit card and it turns out I took some Ambien and ordered two T-34s last night on Amazon.com. I don't give a shit. <laughs> um, that was a weird hit the dirt Molotov thing. So, uh, Seth, his last chance to get into this game is to do some crazy shit with his Pack 40. Um, Titty Twister, I suspect, will just be able to use his sniper to decrew these things. Um, we have an epic fight going on here. Vet 3 versus Vet 3. Hit the dirt. Oh, they're over now. They hit the dirt. Plus, I think the snipers are here. Nope, it's still too far, but, um, actually, you shouldn't count the Grenadiers out yet, they have the LMG-42, but you see they spend about as much time running around like jerks as firing. You know, with this thing, where's the Katusha coming in right here? Does he see the pack? Yeah, he sees the pack, so, uh, probably Katusha and the pack and also these things are going to be retreated. Doesn't kill anybody, and this can go up. That's what I'm saying. Okay, doesn't kill anybody, glad I wasn't a liar, and, uh, he's just going to be healed up back at base, but Tibby Twister knows there's a pack afoot. He's going to be careful with his SU-85, he's going to be careful with his T-34, which is just chilling. And, um, yeah, excellent play by both players. Really interesting job with Sefa um, conserving those pack Panzer IVs on the right the entire time. Uh, it, we can maybe fault Titty Twister for not hitting over there sooner with his SU-85s and also losing those that T-34 against them on the right when he was fairly certain those two things were hanging out on the right. But, um, you know, those are tactical choices, strategic choices both players made, and, um, you saw when eventually Titty Twister did move over there, the only thing that stopped the, pan the Tigers from really rampaging through and killing everything he owned was uh, that noble T-34 that gave its life. This T-34 will go down in history as the one to stop the Tiger Assault, to blunt the Tiger Assault enough to let the two SU-85s destroy the Panzer IVs, and that is, I think, the point he lost to set in the game. Um, assuming he's lost the game, it's going to be tough for him to come back, but again, two Tigers, one over here, one over here. So now we've got a split tiger strategy. Sefa thinking maybe I can win on VPs. I'm down to 139 versus my opponent's 202. It's not like terrible. Um, maybe I can pull a VP lead out of this uh, out of this thing and um, also I'll cap some stuff. Why not? But um, I'm having trouble seeing that happen, right? T Twister's got a commanding hold on the middle uh, with his SU-85s. It's a nice wide open territory. Just beautiful, beautiful for defending with tank destroyers. Very difficult for your opponent to come in. Talk about sexist, he's letting the men cloak and the women are just a bait. God damn. Um, but, uh, yep, Seth is definitely going for the VP at this point. And, uh, what can he blame him for? It's, it's late game and uh, that's what he wants to do to win. Today, Twister floating 200 fuel, Seth is floating 164 fuel, both of them not entirely sure what to buy. So, interesting use of floating resources and reserved units, I think, throughout this entire game. Um, it shows the value of not wanting to commit, or shows the not wanting to commitness of these two extremely good players, and um, incorporate that into your tactics, but only after you've incorporated the never never float rule. Because I say that it says Titty Twister is floating 700 or 170, and or sorry, Seth is floating 700 or 170, potentially saving for a tiger, and Titty Twister is floating 500 or 200. Uh, I so, sometimes even pros float. Right? Sometimes they screw it up. They're too busy doing other stuff. Um, they don't know what to buy in the heat of the moment, so they just postpone the choice, and they keep postponing, they keep postponing. So I'm never going to say that, like, any floating that a pro does is good, but in this case, is that guy dead? No, the medic's fine. In this case, um, that was blind shelling with the Katusha into the HQ, by the way. Just do that every once in a while when you don't have any good shell. Although he totally could have done this. Um, but in this case, I think I'm going to condone the floating, not just by Titty Twister or by Sefa, but from Titty Twister and Sefa. They're both playing very reactionary games, trying to react to exactly what their opponent's doing. Where's the mine? Over here. Okay, cool. Good job laying these mines. Have the other one's gone off yet? Finding a mine in Company Heroes 2 replays is basically impossible, okay? Like, this one's hidden behind a tree, so it's, like, literally impossible, but, um... Typically it's... Oh, God! That's the end of that house. So now, Sefa, what's he got? He's got two squads plus two pioneers. One of his squads, like, getting off the... He doesn't even have enough to stand up to the constant sniper cell. Still just that two for the women. <sighs> 44 kills on this, and Seth is just like, fuck this, I'm buying a scout car. As if that'll help. <laughs> um, and he's upgunning it with the motherfucker. No, don't. This is not a good thing. Um, 
If you get some lucky hits with this upgun, it'll kill the snipers, but basically either way, the scout car's not great at killing snipers, and, uh, I don't know. But, so, Seth is really going downhill now. Uh, I don't know what the scout car's for. Maybe to kill the snipers or something, whatever. That was it. Look how tiny damage the AT grenade does to this tiger. But it kills the, uh, uh, engine, so that's what you want. So this was a tremendous game. I had a ton of fun watching this. Um, floating is good. If you're one of these two people, otherwise don't float. I do not give you my permission to float unless you're Sepha or Titty Twister or somebody who beats them in the tournament. And um, this is the best of three, so pay attention for the next two. Uh, God, this thing was long. We're 50 minutes in and it's not over yet, so I don't know if I'm going to cast the next two right now or just wait for a while. There's no hurry because the tournament's going to be over by the time you hear this, so... Uh, yeah, very interesting job. Was that a... I I heard something. It's just a tiger making a lot of noise. Huh. Interesting noise. He's gonna crush some people. No, I'm just kidding. Here we go. SU-85's engaging the tiger. This guy's like... He's in the wrong direction. Is he gonna die? Doesn't matter. Oh no, I was rooting for you, little man. Look at the tiger just getting destroyed. That was like four hits, maybe? Four hits on the rear. Five hits on the rear armor, I think. Or six... Six to kill. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a tiger pop? The world is now assured that it's six um, snipers sniping. <laughs> They've taken the pack 40. Except, uh, uh, now he's using his scout car for whatever crazy strategy he's got. Maybe it's going to Katusha. That maybe explains it. But, um, surprise, no. Pack 40 got the kill. No. 34 got the kill. Um, so, this is Sepha's last hurrah, sending in this tiger, he's like, uh, oh, hooray, but it's gonna get rammed. Is it? We gonna see a ram? That'd be a nice way to end this, but, uh, I don't think so. So, the lesson here is T-34's own, um, if only because they can disable things for your SU-85s. Back tech to the T-34s, because he got his SU-85s out first, which is what kept the Panzer IVs from running roughshod all over him. Sefa had to just spend these Panzer IVs establishing a hold on the right side of the map. Worked for him for a while, but he just couldn't keep it up. And uh, Titty Twister's tremendous unit preservation and tremendous sniper usage is uh, what gave him the win, uh, in addition to uh, what he's doing his SU-85s. Look at the stars up here. This is more stars than because that actually didn't have a ton of stars. It was just a crazy acid trip. But um, there were some stars involved. Play back over with the ram on the tiger that I wanted to see um, with some smoke. So 420 every day. I hope you really enjoyed this shotcast. I certainly did. Um, and join me next time for the next two out uh, of this. Two, uh, if, there's, if there's two more. If Titty Twister wins the next one, it's just going to be the end. But um, join me next time. Bye. Where's the stop recording key? There it is.